Gentlemen, it has been way too long. We're here at the uh, Bell Building here in Toronto. I don't know how you guys do this, man. You performed last night. You're performing tonight uh, as we speak. You're also you're doing interviews all over the place. It made time for me. How do you guys do this, man, after all these years? <laughs> well, um, drugs. Uh, no, I mean... I think you just They're all legal drugs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, le yeah, yeah, totally legal. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean it's it's pretty easy uh, when people say they want to talk about what you're doing because they're excited to share it with their fans, and we're like, okay, we'll come talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think too, just I mean, we're focused on the project. We're we're going to do what we love, and mm -hmm. um, we want to get it out there. And you know, when we're you know we're here to share the project with fans, and so we want to you know share it on stage, share it you know through you know conversations. Yeah, well, you know, we're so happy you guys are here. Toronto is a hotbed for you guys. It's a, it's a um, good city. Yeah, yeah, talk about talk about the years. I mean, you talk about the years of coming here from being kids to mm -hmm. to gentlemen, and how Toronto has supported you guys over the years. Well, I mean, I, it's it's hard not to not to flash back to our first few trips uh, to Toronto. You know, playing it. Uh, what was it called? It was called Paramount uh, Canada's Wonderland. Yeah. Back in the day, yep. doing some doing some stuff. You know, on what was that? Like, we did like YTV Radio and much music something. stuff, and 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 you know, fans, you know, going going you know crazy. I mean, I think also too about you know even up to last year. I mean, we did three shows in Toronto That's last right. year, two Christmas shows, one anniversary show. I mean, so it's continually been throughout the last you know twenty plus years. Has, has been a very consistent, you know, place for us to come, and also we've got a lot of amazing fans here. So, but, you know, we talk about Toronto fans. I remember I had the honor of introducing you guys over to the CNE Band Shell several years ago. Right. Internationally, there were people from around the world mm -hmm. that were at that show. Right. It blew my mind. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what we're doing right, but we're going to keep <laughs> trying to do it. Yeah. I think um, hopefully it's because. The messages in the music, the the way we treat what we do, and hopefully people see like the respect we have for this position. Like when you get to be a band that is successful enough to make it your life and travel the world, and yeah. like you got to treat that like an opportunity, not like a birthright. And uh, I I hope it's because people see that and they want to be a part of like sharing those with other people, like experiencing yeah. that together. You see so many fans who now, like a, as a band who's been coming to Canada for, what, 21, 22 years, like, like you see fans who've been with us for multiple decades, and now they're either coming with their friends that they've met for years together, we're going to go to the Hanson Show every year, or now in some cases it's like, I'm bringing my son or my daughter, like, and multiple generations, and that's... Yeah, that's amazing. And another cool thing, it's an opportunity you have every day you make music because, you know, you, our job is to make new things. And so you have this history that keeps building and building and building. But you also, every day you walk into the studio, every day you walk on stage, you have a chance to, to you know, keep that energy that, that you started with and say, yeah. well, what have I not done? And, Redefine you know, what have I, where am I going? And because, I mean, we all got turned on to, you know, the Beatles and Aerosmith and, you know, artists, you know, Tom Petty, artists that weren't from our peer group right and so we always think about that that's what our experience was so what are we going to you know trail of breadcrumbs you never know where you're going to connect with a new fan you know we could have we we have fans you know that we meet now that are younger than our first record yeah. you know so you're like you're 18 you're 20 and so you just you just keep putting out things you're proud of yeah. and then hope that you get to keep doing it well know? let's talk about string theory then because to me this is like you're sergeant peppers at talking about the beatles you guys have bit, gone yeah. somewhere completely different that i don't think anybody would have thought you'd go down that road no i mean that has been really fun i mean people are definitely the fans kind of go oh yeah i can see why but definitely not on the like 2018 streaming services. Let's do a double symphonic album. How about that? <laughs> you know, like not the logical pivot point. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's logical because it's about music, and it's always been about music. And you know, it's not to say it's not that there's not stories and that there's not characters off stage. But we're here because of the craft, and and so I think that that is exciting to us because it's it's bringing people back to in some cases hearing a song that they they think they know and going wow I never heard it that way and then also getting a chance to introduce people to new sounds um, even if it's not just for our benefit you know we're we're getting to actually promote like classical players and and classical you know organizations in cities all over the world 
And a lot of our fans, they're saying, man, I've never been to a symphony show. And they're joining and interested in what the symphony is doing in their town. So there's something almost like a surprise cool thing about this project is we're actually, we're sort of honoring um, a whole nother, you know, musical uh, pursuit and discipline, yeah. you know. You yeah. gonna say something? Well, no, I was going to say, I think um, part of the reason why this is such a logical decision for us, though maybe other people didn't see us doing this like oh wow Hanson symphony that's not what i expected but I, I remember a few years ago i said in an interview to our fans uh, i said we may never make another album and people oh my god it's over <laughs> and i was like well what i mean is the world is changing and it's not about albums like it, it, it's about stories it's about something bigger and so what we're making is an experience and sometimes that's going to take the form of an album. And sometimes that's going to take a form of a, of a song. And sometimes that's going to take a form of a, a concert a or, or a whatever. musical or a whatever it yeah. is. And, and we want you to buy into these creative experiences, not into a piece of plastic. But vocally and musically, how did you guys approach this? Mm. Because I would assume vocal. I mean, you guys are used to the guitars, drums, mm. and everything else. I'm assuming vocally you had to change things up because you had an orchestra. And just yeah. arranging this, yeah. I mean, again, how did you guys do all this? Well, I mean, I, honestly, I mean, the, the thing for us with this whole project was making sure that we're taking um, what we have been historically doing with these songs back enough right it's like right. like pulling away guitar parts pulling away piano parts pulling away vocal parts in some cases mm -hmm. and stripping it down to the essence of the song in and in as many cases as possible because when you have the harmonic mm -hmm. emotional uh depth. power and depth of an orchestra you want to make sure that that you use it <laughs> you know it's like we may never do this ever again in the rest of our for the rest of our lives we better make sure it counts and so you want to make sure that there's the room for people to really clearly hear these really cool french horn parts this really great sweeping cello part the the, the english horn the, the oboes the clarinets you want to make sure that the, the, the plucking of the harp in those you know part, so so making the room was the most yeah. important thing and and even though i will say i think we probably stripped back less of the vocal stuff but we definitely stripped back a lot of things as as many as we Felt like we needed it's to. a show that um, we knew we wanted to do something with orchestras for a while, right? That's sort of a bucket list thing. I would say probably a decade. It's been like, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. But when we actually came to the point of saying, how do we do this? It took a while because there's so many potential songs. Yeah. Do you write a complete show from scratch? Yeah. Do you do all the hits? Do you do all the songs that would maybe, they've already had strings on them and we just accentuate that? Yeah. Um, th there's a lot of different approaches, and what we landed on was that the only way was to tell a story, right? And so we sat down and we wrote a story, and we said, okay, this will be the driving force, and how do you best tell that story? Well, it's the words. And so if you look at the track listing, though there are songs that people will know, I mean, Umbop's on this record, and Where's the Love's on this record, This, this I'm Around, around yeah. um, it's it's a, it's kind of an odd collection of songs that are really deep cuts and songs that were written for the record and album tracks and um, songs that were never released to the public have only been released to like our online membership and and um, I think what that illustrates for people is the way we look at this process and the way we we approach this everything was on the table it wasn't about doing the logical choice it was about doing the thing that would drive forward this creative idea. And hopefully the result is one that people like. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think it's important too to say like, um, we've made a lot of choices that were, um, you know, not intuitive unless you were really paying attention. You know, I mean, even to starting to, deciding to start the label, um, you know, deciding to, you know, make an, do an acoustic tour early on in that process. I mean, even the anniversary tour last year. I mean, the Roots and Rock and Roll tour, we did two tours ago. We did a night of covers and a night of music. And so what you're really just doing is you're going, you know, this has been our approach. And whether it's right or not, we'll see. But is if we're excited about it, we can share that excitement with fans. And then in turn, it, that's the cycle, you know, that they, like, because they can see in your face when you're like, yeah, you know, it's pretty good. 
you know, they're, they're like, uh, should, I'm, I'm gonna have to like buy a ticket. I'm not gonna. So you you're having to you know you you have to be, have to be invested in it so, to to get out there and share with people. But what I love about this is because you guys are doing something. You think about it, I said about uh, the Beatles, Sergeant Pepper's right, did yeah. it. Tina Turner did it with the Wall of Sound. Ray yeah. Charles did it too. You guys are following in that path. I don't know if you realize. It. Well, I mean, those are amazing icons and i say it as far as whether we realize we know what those artists did mm -hmm. whether we get categorized ultimately in that caliber is up to history um i think what what all those artists were doing and did is they were they were artists first <laughs> they were creators first and then like whether it works as a marketing thing or whether it works as a, in a commercial way is the secondary question. Yeah. I mean, one of the, especially now, we, we, we made the point of being a band 25 years last year. We made that point. People go, 25 years. It's like, how do you keep doing it? It's the thing I would say, and, you know, at any point, somebody could say, look, I want to be a carpenter. I want to go, you know, sail the seven seas, you know, but each. I mean, Taylor actually does know, want to sail the seven yeah. seas. But, <laughs> but, yeah, I did, we'll do that on the boat. We sail, we'll be sailing. But, but at, at, our, at our core, even if not, even if we weren't doing what we do, I think each of us, we're really just finding a way to channel something that we have to do to be yeah. who we are. I mean, I'm, you know, songs, music, it's like, it's just floating out there. I mean, you can't turn it off. I mean, it's, and so it's a matter of your, when you decide to be a musician, you're really deciding to, to monetize a, a, somewhat of a, an addiction. You know, you're, yeah. you've got this thing, this is who you are. And I think for, for, if you're Ray Charles, if you're Paul McCartney, you know, if those artists, those icons, I would, I would say, you talk to them, they probably tell you that same thing. Like, look, this is just, this is me. Like, I, I'm, I'm not sane if I'm not creating something. So I think it's more just the fact that we've been able to keep an audience that's allowed us to keep making music. Um, otherwise, we'd probably be in homes somewhere, you know, rocking back and forth, <laughs> going, hey, no, hey, you know, why aren't you, you know, able to channel that energy, you know? You need to say something, too. No, 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 I was just going to tease you, be heavily medicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel quite that same. I think I'd be fine not in a home with some mental... Okay. I already have the mental disorders. <laughs> What's but. happening with the rest of the year? I mean, you've got this album yeah. out. You're touring right now. I saw the list of uh, shows you guys are doing. Is that leading into 2019 also? Well, I mean, I, I think the, the big question for us is, is definitely what 2019 and 2020 look like for the band. I mean, we've got a lot of really cool ideas that are floating around, a lot of things that are on the bucket list, on the yeah, I mean, on, this, on the pegboard going, oh, well, if we could only pull continues. this off. Uh, yeah. You know, we'll go to Europe in uh, February and yeah. Australia in March and there's already some more dates in the spring. Um, it's something uh, that, you know, it, it's, it's just beginning. There's a long tail in strength theory, right? Yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, the future is bright. And, and uh, I think we will continue to, I think, hopefully do the kind of projects that really center around craftsmanship. I think that's something I, I just can't stress enough about what we are as a group. Like, that idea of the craft, of of the challenge of looking at a new creative mountain and figuring out how to climb it. Um, I mean, that's it. Okay, well, look, you know, with all this success, it really means you're finally going to give me my car. Where <laughs> is my car? We made this bet years ago. I want my car, man. I was even talking to people just a couple of weekends ago, and I said, you know, Hanson's in town. I got to catch. Where is my car? It's um, in a, it's in a building. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen the side. <laughs> Zach, building. he's not a great driver. You know, it sits through the brick. Rudy, I I really want to one day show up in a car for you. Mm -hmm. I just just a trashed out, it, like one that used to be used as a chicken coop. Just roll up. <laughs> Rudy, got it. I, I don't care. Car. I just want my car because if it's a Hanson car, I know I can sell that thing, make some money off of that. <laughs> Social media, uh, guys, where do we go to follow you? Because like I said, you guys are international all over the world. Um, Hanson Music um, on, on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and then just the Hanson YouTube page. I love it. Yeah. Guys, great seeing you. Yeah, thanks so Congratulations much. Congratulations Thank on all the success, man. Yeah. Love it. You're going to get me my car. I know. I, it's it's going to happen eventually. I, I believe it. This is Zach's new Zuber <laughs> showing up to your house. <laughs> so, show up in one of those little scooters. All I can get is you this scooter. <laughs> <laughs>